Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk on the road. And yes, we're literally here on the road off PV Drive East at the San Ramon Canyon. I'm with our Public Works Director, Michael Throne. It's so great to have you here. He's going to give us a big update on what is the city's biggest infrastructure project. That is, of course, the San Ramon Canyon project, $20 million project. Starting to wrap it up a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So welcome here to RPV City Talk. And let's just start off by sharing with our residents what's the latest with San Ramon. Well, thank you, Liz. Thank you for the opportunity to share something that I enjoy the most, which is being outside doing public works construction projects. Especially on a good day like today. Especially on an excellent day like we have down here in RPV. Uh, this is a very exciting project for uh, not only the staff, the public works professionals, but also I think the community in general. This solves a long-term problem that has not only involved RPV residents, but also those who live in San Pedro. And so uh, being part of the team to, to wrap this project up, I uh, came here in January and it was already very much underway. Uh, but to see this sort of civil engineering here in RPV is really fantastic. Well, we're going to talk a lot about the engineering and just what was involved with this massive project. Um, new to the city as the Public Works Director, talk a little bit about your background um, in coming here to the city. Well, I have almost 30 years of experience as a licensed professional engineer in the state of California. And I've gone through the design process. I spent many years uh, in private consulting designing. And then I moved over into municipal government. I've worked in full service cities, which are those that provide all of the services. Uh, RPV provides streets and, and storm drain and some level of sewer. I've worked in agencies where we've done all of our water and wastewater treatment. Uh, we've run parks, uh, fleet management. So uh, coming to a community like this where you know I can spend some time to focus on streets and storm drain and, and uh, some sewer work is really quite exciting. So I've, I just came down from uh, working in uh, gorgeous Napa County and uh, it's, it's sort of the, sort of the same. It's gorgeous weather all the time. You get the fog coming and, in. And we do have a vineyard now that's starting to grow right off of uh, the Catalina View Garden. So you'll get Absolutely. a You can here. see that from the road. <laughs> and it's, uh, it kind of makes me feel more at home because uh, I've spent a lot of time dealing with vineyards and, and their infrastructure needs and how you provide water to them. So I've had a, a many, many years uh, working on projects like that, managing departments, uh, working with lots of great teams, and I'm here doing the same thing. Well, we're glad you made your way down here south and uh, here to our beautiful coastal community. And you moved right to RPV, so you're living right in the city. I live next to the old marine land, and uh, I'm enjoying every minute of it. That's great. Well, we're glad to have you on board. The fact is, you came on board um, during the city's biggest uh, infrastructure project, like we said earlier, $20 million. So what challenges did that pose for you when you were coming in sort of as it already was taking place? Well, um, I think I was very fortunate in that uh, the prior directors had set up a good process and that the staff is extremely professional. There are seven licensed professional civil engineers here in RPV and they know their business. And so they were able to shepherd this project through the development process, through the community process, through the funding process, the environmental work, and finally get to the fun part, which is uh, constructing it and, and building the, the phenomenal tunnel that's uh, here that leads you all the, all the way down to the ocean. So give us some background, just to begin with, for our viewers watching that might not even know why we needed this to begin with. So just explain that, you know, why did the city need to do this? Well, it's, it's really sort of um, straightforward drainage. The canyon behind us here uh, is subject to landslides. And so when you get a, a lot of rain in the canyon, uh, it moves, it first creates the landslide, and then it transports all that sediment all the way down uh, through San Ramon Canyon to 25th Street. Well, the drainage underneath 25th Street isn't necessarily of the most current standard. So that water backs up because of the sediment, and so now what happens is that that water overflows 25th and winds up in the mobile home community, which is down on the other side. So to alleviate those problems, uh, the cities and its engineers uh, came up with a plan to intercept that water in Rancho Palos Verdes and take it straight out to the ocean. 
and therefore it, it uh, diverts all of those big flows uh, from going down into and causing the problems down that there could be down in San Pedro. And of course, also the water flow issues coming down this canyon. As we sit here alongside PV Drive East, there were issues of it undermining as well, right? With the road Yes, side. absolutely. The, the road here is very, very close to the canyon or vice versa over time. And so by taking those flows, those heavy flows out of the canyon, then the road is able to remain in its place and not have to move. There's not a lot of space or good geometry to to rerun the the switchback. So taking care of the of the drainage problems helps the folks downstream, and for us, it keeps the road in the right spot. Well, I know, as I've said on many shows that I've done to discuss this topic in the years past, that I live on PV Drive South, as you are now often. All those heavy rains when we would have them and the road would get closed, I mean, it was a huge issue beyond all the other major safety concerns as well, but besides that inconvenience, so it's gonna be nice. It's, it's gonna be very nice. Uh, we were very fortunate this winter to not really have a significant winter. Uh, the project was prepared for it, had the heavens opened up, right. but any pretty much any time from right now, if we were to get the 100 year storm, the system will work. It's ready to work. So let's talk about the system. Can you walk us through the project, but let's just begin right here where we're sitting. Give us a little scene setter right now. I know we've got, you've got workers up at the top here. Just to kind of explain where we are right now and how then lead us through the project. Well, where we are is we're very close to the headworks. The headworks is where the water will flow from the canyon and from the upper areas. Uh, it'll flow into a giant concrete structure. Uh, that flows into a large diameter culvert. It's um, about 50 or 60 inches in diameter, and it runs down underneath PV Drive East, it goes underneath PV Drive South, and it works its way all the way out to pretty much the ocean at the shoreline. And so the, uh, the design of this was there's a, there was a portion that there was a giant excavation and, and the contractors put pipes in, and then they, they tunneled down from the top of the slope uh, down by the water, down to the ocean, and then they tunneled underneath uh, PV Drive uh, south all the way up to this headworks here. Now for you watching this go through, what was, what was just amazing for you to see this come together? Well, I really enjoyed walking through the tunnel. Huh. So just before the tunnel was closed off, uh, because there was a tunnel constructed with a tunnel boring machine, and then inside the tunnel there's actually the drainage pipe. So uh, I was very fortunate to get here just at the right time to walk through the tunnel before it was filled with the drainage pipe because then after that, it's too small of a diameter to walk through. And describe the pipeline. What is, how, how long is this pipe and, and what is it? Uh, the, the pipe is about three quarters of a mile long in general and it's a, it's a welded steel pipe. And so consequently, it's never going to leak and it, it'll be very strong and it will certainly last its hundred years. So I know um, we're talking about when, if all goes well, will this be wrapped up and finished? Well, right now we're looking at substantial completion, which is when all of the major work is done. Uh, that will all be done in June. And then there's a lot of landscaping that still has to be performed. So that will be carrying on through the summer. The contractor will be here taking care of the landscaping in the dry time. And then once it becomes winter, then it'll establish itself. Uh, some other work is uh, because we've come in under under our grants levels. Uh, there are some opportunities to do some more drainage work along PV Drive East. And so we're, we're working with the state to take that opportunity and to spend our full grant a lot. I was gonna say, when you say under, un, you come in under, does that mean the project is technically gonna be under budget as well? It will be under budget, project? yes. Wow, that's mm -hmm. that's awesome. Cause it was, was it about 20 million? In round numbers, 20 yeah, million, Yeah, let's yes. just throw that out there. And half we got the state grants. Yes. So there you go. So half of it the city paid for mm -hmm. using its cash reserves. Yep. And then the other half was a, a state grant. Is there anything as residents are watching that you want them to know about, about this project? We talked a little bit earlier about why it was needed, but really to say, you know, this is how it's going to benefit, benefit the residents of RPV and the entire community when it's finished. Well, there's the two levels of, of benefits. One is certainly the protection of PV Drive East from falling down into the canyon. Um, that's a critical link from the shoreline up into the hills. So we definitely want to make sure that that's preserved because that is a major transportation link. The, the other one is protection of our neighbors downstream. And uh, the, the city is exposed to huge liability uh, had it not done anything and there would, would have been 
a very major storm, could have washed out the road, could have then now washed out many mobile homes that are south of the road. And, and that risk, I think, was recognized by the council and by the community and by the regulators who approved the, uh, the connection of a storm drain pipe to the Pacific Ocean. All right, because there's different jurisdictions too, because LA County has property here, you have the city of LA, I think they were thinking maybe hopefully it'd be more of a joint effort, but of course in the end, yeah, the water all starts on our PV property, right? So yes. the city had to take charge. In, in the end, under, under the way drainage is dealt with, uh, those who create the water have to deal with mm -hmm. the impacts of the water downstream. And, it, and it, is, it was, I think, a very good choice for the city to lead it because the, the vision of of protecting ourselves and, and helping out our neighbors, that was maintained through the whole project. Have you been contacted by other cities, jurisdictions to find out what happened here with your project? Anybody? No, not yet, yeah, not but yet, we, we I... are uh, looking forward to to proposing or nominating this for a project of the of the year Excellent. Uh, through the uh, Southern California chapter of the American Public Works Association. Oh, fabulous. So as, a, as a collaborative project, one that uses you know a little bit of unique uh, uh, construction methods and one that gets the job done. Anything we're going to move on because we have lots more to talk about with other public works projects that you're dealing with. But anything else you think is important again that you want the community to understand about just what was involved with getting San Ramon, you know, get to uh, to have this happen. Well, there was a a lot of dedication and endurance by the community and the council to to get a project of this magnitude. Not many communities can. Uh, promote and, and, and accomplish a $20 million capital improvement project and to really pay for half of it. So that is a very, very unique component. Not many communities have the will to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, even having the will at one point to borrow money to, to fund it. And so uh, I think it goes to show that the community can accomplish projects on this scale and have them turn out as, as the community wanted them to. All right, so let's move on to what is your next biggest public works project sort of on, up the pipeline after we are done here? What else is going well, on? Well, in, in my experience, <laughs> the summertime is always the time to choose a major street and then just do a lot of work to it uh, and then try to get it done before school starts. Mm -hmm. So with that theme that I've had my career, uh, we will be uh, starting uh, in force uh, very shortly, uh, PV Drive East. We're doing a major resurfacing project. Uh, we're going to be going in and putting in uh, bike lanes and uh, sidewalks and some equestrian facilities and really uh, st not straightening out the road but improving its safety in many places. And uh, our intent is to bring it into the current uh, design and current operations so that it'll be a, a safer facility. For and of road. course trying to do that with the least inconvenience to the residents um, and motorists. So what for people watching when they want to know what's going on is it best to go to the city website to find out the timeline? You can go to the city's website because we do have a, a place for it uh, for people to get information. We also have a full-time on-site inspector uh, who has a um, about a six inch thick binder of every single address and every single action we're going to be doing okay. at those addresses. And he's out and about all the time. He's actually meeting with every single property owner wow. to make sure that they're, you know, finally uh, uh, realize that yes, the project is a go and we are going to be doing it. Uh, we already dealt with some uh, minor changes to the design just to accommodate some uh, special features that are very unique for the roadside that you know, would be a shame to get rid of if we could not engineer around. Like example, the trees going through the mirror list area, I heard some discussion about that. Will those need to be removed? And I heard Some no. of them will need to be, some of them won't. And our, our, always our default is not to remove trees. That's our, our first thing. And as someone who owns a, an apple orchard, tree removal is always the last thing on my list. Mm. So uh, my staff is very sensitive to that. But also on the other hand, uh, sometimes you do have to do some things in order to ensure public safety and the driver's safety that may impact the health of the tree. So we do work very closely with the, the residents and our engineers to make sure that we get a good balance there. And so this will be starting from PV Drive South, uh, PV Drive East intersection all the way to the reservoir and how, and how far do I you will go? go? All the way to the city limits on the north and okay. it will come down into this area. Of, as I mentioned, if uh, we'll, we expect to have some grant funds left over on the San Ramon okay. project and we hope to use some of that for drainage work along this road and then do some resurfacing here.
So of course, since we're talking a lot about roads here, I want to move on to the bumpy road on PV Drive South, my favorite road. What's happening there? Well, that, that's a very, very interesting road. When, when, I, when I was uh, interviewing for the, for the position and researching RPV, uh, that road came up as a very unique feature. <laughs> and it's a very unique challenge. Um, there really aren't many places that have a, a generally a very actively slow-moving landslide that you need to deal with. So now that we have a road on top of it, and the road's been there for many years, we have some projects. There's a, a, a very sharp curve at the end of it on the eastern end. Uh, we plan to straighten that out because the road has moved almost, well, more than 150 feet from where it should be. So we're going to put most of it back into the public right-of-way where it ought to be. And we're going to smooth out the curve and some of the undulations. We have a regular maintenance program where we go in and uh, resurface it as it moves. We have some uh, proposals that the council is going to consider for uh, a uh, for more dewatering wells. Dewatering wells are used to sort of dry out the landslide mm -hmm. so it'll slow down. Um, we're working on, on that. We also have some other ideas of improving striping and signing so that it's much brighter at night as you drive. When you, you say you have an ongoing city, pro uh, it's, always, it's always ongoing in the budget, is that cost about a half a million dollars a year? Did I hear that? To work it's, on that's that? The, it's about a half a million dollars a year to keep it maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that means what we do about every six to eight weeks, we go out and we do a resurfacing project in areas that are uh, have the road is basically dropping into the ocean. And so by moving it back into its right of way, we'll, we will slow down that that process but the road will eventually work its way back to where it is right now when my dad comes out to visit and he's he's in real estate he says why don't you just put a bridge <laughs> that's his solution you know, he's also almost 90 so he can say what he wants no. there are many many solutions that I, I've <laughs> talked to to people who have lived here a long time and there there's yet to be a, a consensus as to right. what that solution but I think what San Ramon demonstrates to the community is that if uh, the city was was had the will and the interest of spending tens of millions of dollars that the that there is the uh, the public infrastructure inside the city to create a project and to execute it okay let's move on to some other projects you might want to share with the community things you're excited about to work on that you know big or small anything else that, that's going to keep you busy this summer obviously we've got pv drive east you got san ramon uh, we're, we have uh, about a seven or eight million dollar capital improvement program that we're going to the council with. And that's, that's a lot of storm drain related projects, a lot of uh, annual resurfacing projects. One of the things this community should be very, very proud of is its condition of its roads. Most communities don't have roads that are kept in this condition. And the condition on a, grade, on a scale of zero to 100 is in excess of 80. Most communities are down in the 60s and cannot fund the necessary work to be done every year to keep it there. RPV is able to, for the last five or six, eight years, been able to spend two or three million dollars a year on resurfacing, and that keeps our roads in such really great shape. shape. And that's quite an accomplishment, something to be very proud of. Right. We are in budget season right now, and uh, I believe uh, the June 17th meeting is when the City Council is expected to approve the 2014-15 budget. Talk about the Public Works budget, sort of where the pies, how it's broken up, and you mentioned you're putting forward $7 million in capital improvement. So, so Public Works has two sorts of budgets. One's an operating budget, okay. and our operating budget is $5 million, and that's pretty equivalent to the cost of the Sheriff's contract. Wow. So the, the Public Works staff of 17, uh, using the, the $5 million, uh, most of that, or about half of it, is spent on maintenance of public buildings and streets and park facilities, trails, and the open space. Then we have a capital improvement budget, which is around 7 or $8 million, and that's used for improvements such as a San Ramon-type project, mm -hmm. but certainly on a, on a much smaller scale. It's your wish list? No. <laughs> Or the and need list, they're, not the wish are, list. Not, it's not a wish list. We have a wish list, that, and the wish list is how tens many of millions? millions of dollars. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's the there's an, an active list of projects that, uh, as we accomplish projects on our current list, uh, we look at our five year plan and we move projects forward as the funding is is made available. Okay. 
Um, one thing I want to talk to you about um, for our residents that have been, you know, they watch the council meetings and we're hearing this now more often, it's called the IMP. The, and it's going through, you're going through the IMP process, which is the Inf Infrastructure Management Plan. Yes. Explain what that's all about and where you're at with that. Well, the Infrastructure Management Plan is an, is a, an approach to managing all of the infrastructure that you have. And so the, the community spent the last year uh, evaluating the condition of eight different categories of infrastructure, which is parks and buildings and streets and sewers and, and storm drain and, and the trails landslide, and all and that. trails and all those things. And from that, uh, the, the notion came out that uh, it would be a very good idea to manage these things together uh, as part of a, as part of a process or part of a system, because if you just look at them individually, uh, it may be manageable when you, but when you look at all eight different categories and you look at how many years these things uh, live, you know, storm drains can live 100 years, sewer lines are 75 years, public buildings can be 50 years, bridges are 100 years, things like that. Uh, at some point they have to be replaced, they have to be maintained, they have to perhaps be modified. Well, all that takes is a tremendous amount of funding. And when you look at all those funding needs over the life cycle of, say, 50 years or 35 years, uh, it gives you better tools to plan ahead mm -hmm. for when you might consider uh, doing debt financing or borrowing out of uh, the city's reserves or getting grants or, or uh, creating some other sort of revenue measure inside the community. So where we are um, at this point is um, we have a, a good notion as to uh, how this sort of thing can develop and we're working on for the city council a, uh, some uh, suggestions as to how to form a citizens committee okay. to help us, help public works and to help the city council always with um, how to guide not only the, the creation of the plan but then how to manage infrastructure on the citywide scale. And, and, and in the process of working with the city council, your department, um, this, this in process, you're also involving the FAC committee as well, the financial advisory yes, committee. Yes, we would be, we're involved, uh, we've already involved the financial advisory committee, uh, the water quality and flood protection oversight committee. Um, I would suspect at some point we'll go in with the traffic safety committee and, and the planning commission. Uh, but the, the citizens group will be a, another separate group. They'll become the council's infrastructure experts. Okay. And the idea is, too, that when you can come, well, come up with the AMP or an infrastructure management plan, then it guides the council on how to, what they're going to fund and what they're not. And I think the idea was to have this all together so for the next budget, which is actually 2015-16, not this one, to have the tools in place to figure out what do we need to spend, right? So that's yeah, part of, part of the plan is to have a tool for an upcoming budget cycle right. that uh, not, not just uh, the council, but com interested community members can see the results of, of choosing parks over streets or uh, delaying everything for 20 years so that we can save funds. You'll be able to see sort of on a long term uh, f uh, display as the uh, I sort of liken it to a, almost like biorhythm. You'll be able to see when everything synchronizes up and you'll have a lot of funding to do something or the opposite is all of a sudden everything is going to fail all at once and you need to think ahead now for that inevitability. As you've been on board now since January as the Public Works Director, talk more about what are your priorities, um, your goals, which of course the city has goals, and just also we'll talk more about your challenges. Well, the, my, my first priority is always uh, following through with the goals and priorities of the council. Right. Because the, the, the council embodies the, the community's direction of where things want to go. Um, the next thing that's very important to me, and there there's sort of two things that are in parallel. One is organizational uh, development, is keeping my staff as well trained as possible, giving them every opportunity to uh, excel in the, in their profession. The other part is emergency preparedness. Um, one of the things that San Ramon does is it it takes some pressure off of us being of us needing to be prepared for a flood on, at 25th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the work done at uh, in other places for storm drain takes off the pressure of being prepared for major floods. But there's all sorts of things that happen in Southern California. You got fires and floods and earthquakes and all this sort of thing. So being prepared for 
those sorts of emergencies uh, is very important. Um, the, the next step is, uh, or the next priority uh, I see is that while most of the city has, uh, has a sewer system that's maintained by LA County on our behalf, there is a small sewer system that the city owns completely. And so we're totally responsible for it and bringing that system up to contemporary operations and maintenance and construction standards is important because of the risk to public health and safety from sewer overflow. And that, is that a big challenge? That's a big challenge, yes. Any other challenges you want to share as we start to, start to wrap it up here? That... Uh, that's, <laughs> and, You've got a long and, list. And, and, and of course, you know, the, the uh, largest continuously moving landslide in the there United States of America is, is trying how to manage it at the same time of, of looking forward and seeing what sorts of things we can do to uh, either mitigate the, the movement of it or, or do something else. I was wondering for you, what is a day in the life for you here as public works director, public works director at RPV? It's obviously always changing. You... The thing I like about uh, my job as a public works director is I get to go on field trips and those are field trips of my choosing. So uh, I work with my staff. I actually rotate through uh, most of my engineers on a very regular basis, and I have them take me out and show me what they're working on. And many times I'll have two or three different people take me to the same spot, but, there's, but I see it through their eyes and I see the challenges they have. And that helps me in my, in my daily interaction with the, the, the city manager, the council, the, the, the citizens, as to you know, what everyone else is seeing and that that helps me facilitate and be part of the good team that's trying to get the work done and you've been doing this work for a long time like you say decades in this industry you've probably seen a lot of changes there have been a lot of changes <laughs> uh, i think that the biggest change is on the stormwater side is when i started my career the idea was flood control you got the water away from the structures, you know, protect people, very much like this project. This is a flood control project. That's changed over time to being more water quality oriented. Mm -hmm. Flood control is important, but the quality of the water that you discharge into, into the ocean or to the bay or to a river has become very important and something that is more difficult to fund than a capital improvement to fix a flooding problem. And so over time, the challenges of stormwater and keeping the pollution out, for stormwater, temperature is a pollutant. Right. pH is a pollutant. You know, everything that's not rain is a pollutant. And how you deal with that becomes very, very challenging because unlike uh, wastewater, where you know there's a certain amount of water being discharged and you mm -hmm. can calculate it, sometimes you get a lot of rainfall and sometimes you don't get any. And you have to design systems that will treat all of a sudden more water than, than you know what to do with, and other times you have nothing to treat. All right, like the water running off here, which yes. gets put into the ocean. Yes. And you know, it's let our residents know, you go on the city website and you have probably pictures that you post too of just, people can see what you're working on and what you're doing and yes. kind of to, to ch check it out. It's really fascinating. We keep all the records, so it's, uh, it's, it's part of the, the community's history as to how things were accomplished. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael Throne. That is going to do it for this edition of RPV City Talk on the Road. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching. See you next time.